Wow. Now, through these yellow sound towers. Oh, wow. A three story space. With four this is three stories high. Three stories high, four look, screens, nine projectors. Look at that, folks. And it's a nine minute piece about what it was like to be in the audience at Woodstock. Oh, geez, yep. Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow. Ain't it cool? Yes. <laughs> One of my favorite artifacts. This whole case is full of handwritten notes. Uh, before there were cell phones, before there were instant messages, if you were in a crowd of half a million people and lost touch with that person that you rode in with, you were wondering how you were going to get home, get home. you'd grab a paper plate or a piece of pa not paper, scribble a note on it, tack it to a tree or tack it to the information board, and hope and pray that they would read it. And that was the form of communication. This was the instant messages circa 1969. Oh my God. This paper plate really moves me to Cindy with the black hair and sisters. I'm sorry I was too undogether to remember to ask for your address. Please call later in the week, Dan. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, just reading that, you can make up your own story. Yep. Who was Dan? Who was Cindy? Did they ever get together? Uh, uh, and, and you can just see them meeting maybe sharing uh, uh, a blanket for a while and then going their separate ways. And, there we go. All right, what's okay. next? Um, another one of my favorite artifacts <clears throat> is this jacket and shirt. These were issued to the security people who worked at the Woodstock Festival. Uh, they weren't called the security force. They were called the please force. The please force. <laughs> uh, many of them were off-duty policemen from New York City. They were told to leave their weapons at home, and they were told... They were they told are, to leave their weapons at home. Yes, and they were also told that they were not here to enforce the law, they were here to enforce the peace. There was actually a security plan, and it stressed the fact that uh, there, the security force was just here to make sure that violence didn't happen, to, to re resolve problems, but not to knock heads, not to make everybody toe the line, and it, it, it worked. Wow. Uh, there were National Guard and state troopers ready to come in if there were problems, and the organizer said, nope, we've got everything under control, stay away. And face it, 1967, 68, 69, anytime large groups of young people got together and there were police, there was usually a riot. Wow, yep. So uh, this was an example of how leave them alone things will be fine. Right. Uh, but you notice, instead of security, it says peace. Peace. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, here's, yeah, that, here's that iconic poster that Arnold Skolnick designed. Oh, yeah. And yes. you can see the vast difference between the yeah. David Byrd design that was very San Francisco, Hate ashbury and this one, which, I mean, you recognize that logo immediately as Woodstock. Right. <clears throat> uh, this is a movie theater. Um, the, the movie's going on right now, but it's a 21 film, a 21 minute film about the best of the music of Woodstock. Comfortable 128 seat theater, big screen, 5 1 surround sound, and it's the best of the musical performances with some wonderful commentary by Carlos Santana, uh, Richie Havens. Uh, uh, oh, many many of the performers and some some modern performers as well giving their commentary about the music that was played at Woodstock. It's a must see film. Uh, the first time I saw it, I had tears rolling down my face, especially when Jimi Hendrix starts playing Voodoo Child. Voodoo Child. It was absolutely moving, and at the end, I just had to stand up and applaud. It's <laughs> it's 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 worth the price of admission alone. I, alone, okay. <clears throat> Once people have seen the rest of the museum, once they've sat through the 21-minute film, once they've wiped the tears off of their faces, they come into this more quiet space. And this is the Impact Gallery. In the Impact Gallery, we have two booths where people can leave their memories of Woodstock. 
uh, yes, I was at Woodstock, here's my story, or I wasn't there, and here's why, or here's what I learned in the museum today, or the 60s still matter, because um, we've, we've had thousands of responses to this already. Wow. And you can leave your message, you can view other people's messages. Uh, you, you can type them, or you can speak them. And it's a, it's a good way to share stories about the Woodstock experience for the 60s. And uh, it's been quite successful. We also have this video on three monitors. Uh, you can come on through. Thanks. We also have this uh, video on three monitors that has a group of commentators talking about what the 60s mean today. Uh, some are strong supporters of the ideals of the 60s. Some are less strident supporters, such as Ed Meese. Ed Meese, I saw that. Uh, I think Nancy Reagan has a few choice words to say about the 60s. <laughs> and um, it's, we wanted to be as fair and even as we could. Uh, because, face it, it was a traumatic time for the world, especially America. And... Um, not all memories of the 60s or Woodstock are fond memories. Right. That's the museum. Well, thank you so much for your tour. We really appreciate it going through history as we've seen it. My pleasure.